I'm Dr. Dave Pena and I'd like to introduce you to the Stream Coder. Once you've installed the Stream Coder from our website, just open it up, double click on this double click me node and read through this introduction. It will have a brief introduction on things you might need to install, including Python and some packages. Um, you can change the title of a document, which we call a koi. Um, in the nav bar, it has all the things you might expect. You can save a node graph, which we call a koi, as I mentioned. You can reset your canvas. You can make a new node. This might be the most granular way to make a new node. The best way might be just to duplicate an existing node and modify it. You can open up a toolbar with our default nodes and drag and drop in default nodes onto the canvas and utilize them in your algorithm. You can duplicate nodes. You could <laughs> delete nodes. You can disconnect nodes connections. You can export nodes that you might have modified and rename them and send them to people. You can change the nodes, their titles. You can change the nodes title bar colors. This might be useful for identifying different parts of your algorithm. You can import other koi, which are other node graphs, without their connections to be used in your algorithms. You can open node graphs on their own with their connections to be used for your own purposes. You could send those node graphs to a server, a stream server, um, one that we sell in particular that has configuration that is known. This can be useful for say um, image recording, uh, video recording, or uh, tracking objects in a scene or something like this. When we know the, the configuration of the hardware, it's much easier to de debug and we can be more certain that it will run correctly in your laboratory setting. Once you have an algorithm that you like, you can compile that node graph to Python and then run that uh, compiled Python file. This algorithm is just a Gotham filter of a city, an unknown city. It runs through some simple, some simple nodes. And you can see that I can just disconnect the input node, which was that city, and change the image and run it through the same algorithm very quickly. This is one of the benefits of StreamCoder is its dynamic usability. You can see what's going on very easily. This is a picture of Los Angeles, and we just just change the source data basically by disconnecting some nodes which I think is really cool and also a big time saver um, in terms of laboratory flexibility when you might want to direct your algorithm at a different set of source data it doesn't matter where the source data came from every node has within it tabs um, function tab is probably the most important tab allows you to change the Python function that it's actually running. And uh, the on start decorator also very important as it allows the node to run when it receives start from the last node. Uh, here I'm just looking over uh, the Gotham filter. This is just a simple algorithm. The beauty of the stream coder really is your ability to isolate code and reuse that code over and over again and save hours upon hours of coding time especially in situations where your your need for an algorithm to be dynamic is very significant where one person from one person to the next they may need to make modifications to an existing code base and they need to do small changes but they need to know precisely what things to change the stream coder is the best at doing that. We really like the stream coder. We use the stream coder all the time to do data analysis, and we're excited to share it with you. Subscribe to our channel. We'll have plenty of videos coming out on how different use, use cases for the stream coder, different uh, little projects you can take on, and some real life use cases that we've used stream coder to solve data problems for different laboratories. Until next time, I'm Dr. Dave Pena. Goodbye.